Okay, uh, nice to meet you. So uh, your uh, your last album uh, ain't always easy. Uh, get out uh, now, uh, 15th of May. It did, it did, and um, so far the response has been brilliant, and uh, and we're really happy with how the whole thing is is gone. We've we've managed to, to come over to France to play a few shows, and um, and we really seem to be starting to build a little bit of a fan base over here. So we're really happy with how it's gone. Okay, um, when I read uh, when I read about your uh, your bio, you know, your biography, uh, I, I I saw that you stayed two years and a half far from music, working as analyst. Yeah, yeah well, um, I'd, I'd been in and out of bands for for quite a number of years, and um, and the, the last band that I was in before Stone Broken, um, one of the the guys, one of the members, the guitarist, he passed away from. Um, alcohol and and for me that association with alcohol and rock music it put me off for a, for a while and I thought I, I can't do this so I, I, I did I, I carried on with my desk job and I got promoted and I became a data analyst which was okay but it wasn't what I wanted to do um, and then on one of my uh, my breaks at work I, I sat in my car and I thought you know what I can't I can't do this any longer I need to get back out and do some music. So then we started Stone Broken, and it's it's taken off from there. And although um, I think sometimes should I have taken that time off, I think I might have needed to take that time off so that I appreciate music more. And I came back uh, with a different attitude, and uh, and we've managed to really make some waves. And I'm really happy that we've uh, that we've managed to do it. Speak speak a little bit about your your job as data analyst. <laughs> Okay, so I, I used to um, I used to build spreadsheets and uh, and do lots of um, different scenarios to, to to see if we could make any more money as a as a business. And I, I used to work for um, a company called Blakemore, and um, they they used to um, supply all the spa shops uh, with their food. And uh, yeah, I worked there for 12 years actually, until um, about a year and a half ago when I managed to, to give up the, the day job and concentrate on music full time. That's mean, that means that you, you make studies and you get your degree and everything? No, no, no. I just, I, I literally learned on the job. That, that's one thing that I do is if I put my mind to something, I learn how to do everything and I, and I do it uh, without any courses or like a qualification or anything like that. Um, I just manage to progress through the ranks and, uh, and, and naturally uh, kind of teach myself all these kind of things. So it's, it's what um, I've done with the band as well. I managed to learn a lot of things about the industry and I think that really helps having that kind of, um, that, that kind of background because running a band is kind of like running a business, you know? Of course. Exactly, you've got to make the numbers add up. So it, it helps, and I, I don't I don't regret a thing. I think it was good that I spent that time uh, working behind a desk because it gave me the knowledge to then apply that to the music industry. So, so I know you got a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, we've got lots of spreadsheets, <laughs> lots and lots and lots. But uh, you know, you know, it's 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 all good. It means that everyone understands exactly where we are and where we're heading to. So it's good. Yeah. Um... You left for having a, a day day by day job, mm -hmm. and music is not a day by day job. It's it's almost um, yeah. I mean, we we spend every single day doing something uh, for the band, and at the moment, it's it's the only thing that we do. So, a, a lot of people say if you have a good job, you'll never work a day in your life because it doesn't feel like work, and that's exactly where we are now. I wake up every single morning. Um, however early I need to get up for a show. Like this morning, I, I was up sort of half past six, and that's fine, because we're gonna go and play a rock show. If I was to try and get up at half past six to work behind a desk, I would struggle. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's all good. We, we've got a really good setup now, and, uh, and we're really looking forward to what's around the corner. Uh, let's speak about your last album. Uh, you had six weeks to, um, to write uh, the new songs for the album. Is it very quick, six week, for making you know uh, arrangements, texts, uh, melodies, uh, chords? 
It, it was. It was. It was a lot quicker than we usually write, uh, but that's because we had a very, very tight touring schedule, and um, in, in a way, I think it helped us write because we had to make decisions very quickly, and we needed. We had to trust our instincts, and I think that made for a very natural sounding album, and uh, we we sort of drew on influences. Um, that were very close to us. It was a very personal album for me. Um, and I think that was all encouraged by having not much time to write it. So although I don't think I'd want to do it again in six weeks, it was a good experience. So, uh, so now uh, when you play your music on stage, um, you respect strictly what has been recorded or maybe now uh, you have made The, the songs maybe more evolution. Uh, you made it uh, evolution, you know, and um, you know comparing to uh, the tracks uh, on the on the record. Yeah, I mean th there are um, a few tracks that we play live in the set that sound a little bit different to the record, and that is just because, like you say, they evolve and they become something different when you put them on the stage, and um, and we, we try what we we try not to just go out there and play the songs. We want to go out there and put on a show. So uh, we have to change little things around and make um, either songs blend into one another or uh, we introduce different parts so we can get the crowd participation. Um, and it's that, that's what it's all about. It's, it's just a live version of what you've recorded. It doesn't have to be an exact replica of what you've put down in the studio. There, there are so many different parts Um, recorded that we wouldn't be able to play them all live anyway so we we pick out the parts that we think you know need to come through live and then we play those versions um, there's, there's a few songs which we we do uh, play exactly uh, as, as they're heard on the uh, on the record but definitely we we feel as though the songs need to take on a new life when you bring them to the stage so we try and incorporate that into our sets yeah <coughs> Uh, the themes of the songs, you know, the, the lyrics, uh, loss, uh, homesickness, uh, domestic abuse, uh, things you have lived? The, these, the, these things all come from experiences or uh, from observations. So if, if we've seen um, anybody close to us that's been in a situation and we feel as though people need to hear about it, then we'll write a song about it. Um, homesickness, it's not really something that I deal with. I'm, I'm quite happy being on the road all the time. But we, we had a band come over from the uh, uh, the US uh, a couple of years ago. And the front man, um, he, he missed his family a lot. And that inspired me to, to write that song because it's, it's not always easy being out on the road. And that, that's sort of the, the first line of the chorus is, it ain't always easy. And that's the, the title of the album. Um, because he, he struggled and he, he, he missed uh, being at home with his kids and his wife and th these things maybe go unnoticed by fans sometimes and, and they just assume that they love the lifestyle and, and, and everyone's different so we, we try and talk about as much as that as we possibly can just to, to paint a picture I guess and, and let people into our lives and uh, let them into other people's lives and, and it, it brings us closer to our audience I think About the, the question about music, do you still respect the, the lyrics of your song? Mm -hmm. Because uh, maybe uh, sometimes you, when you're going to sing, you say, wow, I wrote this uh, very uh, fast. Maybe uh, this, uh, this word would be uh, better than, like this, or you, you can change? Um, I've, I've never really thought about it, if I'm honest. Um, because I always see, because we wrote them so naturally, It, it was almost like it had to, there, there was no other way to, to write it, you know. It came straight from the heart. So I've, I've never regretted anything that I've written. Um, we wouldn't put it on the record if, if, we, if we didn't like it. So um, al although the, the one thing that it can do is it can change meaning. So you may have written it for a certain reason, but then over time it can become, actually, that now relates to that as well. You know, so it's, it's, it's more about the emotion than the lyrical content. I think I always get the message across, um, but then, <coughs> sorry, um, the, the emotion behind it can change. So, <coughs> your band is not very old, you know. Uh, I think you're, you're very lucky to having uh, 
two records and a record company and world tour for a band that's only five years old. Yeah. We, we've had an incredible journey so far and we're very lucky to be in the position that we're in and we never take that for granted, you know. There's a lot of bands who have been going a lot longer who haven't managed to have the opportunities that we've had. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, we, we, we just work hard and we, we try and do as much as we can in, in, a, in a shorter space as possible and we work um, every single day trying to improve what we do. So I think although it's happened in a very short amount of time and we've had a lot of things come our way, it's because we've worked for it. So. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, when I scheduled the, uh, the interview uh, last week, um, uh, so I, um, I come to see your music and I went to see the, the comments, you know, and I was very uh, surprised about comments about, you know, the, the Nickelback thing yeah, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, do you hate, do you hate Chad Kruger? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I don't think that there's any space in the music industry for hate. I just don't. I mean, they're a, they're a globally recognized band and we get compared to them quite a lot. And, you know, it's, it's fine. A lot, a lot of people, when they say, I hope you don't mind, but I think you sound a little like Nickelback. Uh, you know what? I, I don't mind. Everyone is going to draw their own comparisons. Um, a, a guy came up to me earlier and said, oh, you sound a little bit like Papa Roach. Well, that's, that's how he interprets our music. And, and, <coughs> and these are all influences that we've had growing up. So um, it's, it's fine. You know, you know pe people will think what they think. And we, we have songs that have melody and catchy choruses. And I've got a gravelly tone to my voice. So people are going to draw that uh, conclusion. We, we never set out to sound like anybody. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Maybe the next album you have to make a duo it with Chet Kroger. <laughs> you never know. You never know. No, it, you know what? They're, they're they're great musicians and they write great songs. So you know, being compared to someone who's doing well, that's not a bad thing. It's not yeah. a bad thing at all. So what about now? Uh, we are going to be staying on the road as much as we possibly can. We've we've got a week off now, uh, but then we head out to Belgium to play Grass Pop. And then we head over to the States in August, September, October on a tour with uh, Fuzzy. And we've also got some festivals as well over there. So we're just going to try and stay out there and play to as many new people as we can. Living on the road, uh, it's uh, a dream life. It is. For, for me, for me, uh, it's not for everyone, obviously. Um, but I actually like being in a different city each day. And... Um, I've not actually had a holiday for about five years, so getting to see some sites is quite refreshing and meeting new people and soaking up the, the culture in these different cities and towns and even small villages that we've been able to visit. It's all, it's all, uh, it, it, it sort of opens your eyes to the rest of the world. I've not been able to see uh, that much before the band and now we're playing all over the world it means that I get to see these things so for me it's a privilege to be able to to do this whilst doing something that I love so it's it's for, for, for us it's great but your friend that passed away uh, many years ago did it change even the um, the way of living this on the road uh, thing yeah yeah it did um, I don't drink um, especially not on tour if I can probably count on one hand the amount of single drinks that I've had in the past five years. And it, it did, it, it changed my outlook on the whole thing. I used to you know, go out and go to rock clubs and, and go out and drink, but it, it did actually change the way that I live my life. And now instead of that, um, I'll, I'll just keep myself hydrated. Um, we, I, I try and work out as much as I can to, to try and stay physically fit so that we can put on a great rock show because although the classic rock bands would go on stage with a bottle of Jack Daniels and, and all that sort of stuff to me that's not rock and roll rock and roll is going out there and entertaining the whole crowd so for me that's the number one and that always will be my number one um, and yeah just, just trying to be healthy out there because the industry the way it is now 
I need to be doing this for the next 30 years because you can't just do it for five and say, oh, I've made money now and then give it up. I've, I've, you know, and I want to do it for the next 30 years. So I've got to make sure that everything, especially my voice, is, is still there in 30 years time. So. And um, the, the, uh, the fact of being uh, losing, you know, a, a friend mm -hmm. in the lyrics, Maybe uh, uh, you should, uh, when, when, when someone think about it, you could have uh, coming and write lyrics about faith, religion, things like this, but you know. Yeah, we, well, we, um, we try and write positive songs as much as we can. Um, we, we actually get quite a few fans that approach us and say, you know, this song really helped me through a, a rough patch or this song inspired me to change something about my, my life. <clears throat> and um, on the first album that we, we put out, the, the first song that I wrote lyrically was a, a song called Fall Back Down, uh, which is about being addicted to alcohol. And it was, it was inspired by um, our, our ex-bandmate uh, passing away. But at the end of it all, there's still a positive message because I don't think we should dwell on Uh, the negative things. I think we should try and turn things into positive as much as possible. And we've, we've actually had a, a few people get in touch and say, are you a Christian band? You know, because you've got that message. And we're not, we're not a Christian band. Um, and, and, in, and in fact, uh, a lot of the guys aren't religious at all. So it's just a different way of expressing it, I think. Uh, although we don't conform to a religion, We still want there to be positivity out there. We still want to help everybody and we want everyone to get along. So that's, that's just, that's being a human being, you know, and, and that's what we do. We try and encourage that. We've got a fan base called the Broken Army and they're like a family. You know, they're, they're like 3,000 people on Facebook who all get together, talk about the band and if they go to a show, they meet up with them and That, that's what music is about for us it's about having that connection and we go out and we meet as many fans as possible and it's all about spreading that positivity and um, it, and, and faith in humanity that people are still out there and people still care that's, that's what it's all about yeah uh, when you're on tour and, and festivals like this uh, you know uh, like uh, this uh, download festival in Paris uh, Maybe uh, it's an opportunity for you to, to meet uh, your idols when you were young. Yeah, yeah well, today my, uh, my aim is to meet Dave Grohl. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm not sure if that will happen. We'll, we'll see. But yeah, it's, it's always great playing these sort of festivals. When we played Download last year in the UK, um, we was backstage and we was just having a, a talk between the, the band and Miles Kennedy from Alter Bridge walks past. I'm like, oh my, that's, that's insane. And it's great, you know, you, 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 although sometimes you don't get to actually go up to them and speak to them, you still get to see them. And, and Mark Tremonti from Alter Bridge, I've met him. Um, Phil Campbell from Motorhead, I've, I've, met, I've, I've given him a lift in my car, you know? So it's, it's a great, and I, I think in a way the, the music industry is changing a little bit because people seem to be helping out each other a lot more. So I, I, I managed to get um, Phil Campbell's um, mobile phone number and he said, call me up whenever you want. If you, if you ever need any advice, give me a ring. I think this is the guy from Motorhead and I've got his number and it's, it's crazy. And it's, it is like a, a massive community um, and it's just about getting involved and networking and being a nice person. Yeah, because the, the music has changed and the, uh, the industry, the music industry doesn't put enough money. So now you get your money not from your, your records, I think, but from your shows. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the whole thing's kind of turned on its head. Uh, bands used to um, tour so they could sell an album, but now they put out an album so that they can tour. And, and that's, that's kind of the, the beast that we have to deal with. And it's always changing when you got the likes of Spotify. And, and it was, originally it was iTunes when that came out. So it, it is, you've, you've got to be, be able to still make a living and still pay rent and still pay for your bills. You're, just, you're never going to make as much as you would have 20 years ago. 
you know so you, you need to change what you do and that's why we as a band we put a lot of emphasis on the live show we we want people to come along and we next time we want them to bring five friends with them so so yeah that's that's kind of where our, our attention is we, we still know that we have to write awesome songs we're a band we're musicians you know that's never gonna change we still need to put out great records but what we need to do now is we need to focus on putting on a great show so that's why it helps to to be a data analysis analyst <laughs> that's why it helps to be a data analyst and to uh, know how to make spreadsheets exactly exactly it all helps and it all goes into the same thing you know so um, yeah it's it's literally all about making things work and you do whatever you can to make it work so now uh, maybe you can make uh, you know a company of uh, for helping uh, musician on tours to to know how to 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 uh, to come with money well this is true i mean there's there's a lot of bands out there that will lose money because they just don't know all these different things and we that's another thing that we try and do is is if a band comes up to us and asks us anything we will try and help them as much as possible um we've we've had meetings with other local bands to us about how you can improve this and how you can improve that and it's all about sharing your knowledge because that there is no one out there teaching it you know we we made mistakes along the way and that cost us money but we've been able to pick ourselves up and keep going and keep going and i think it's important that you share that knowledge with other bands because otherwise there'll be no future headliners So maybe Phil Campbell one day is gonna phone you to say, "Hey man, help me to make a spreadsheet." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can do that. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's it's still up in my mind. I can still do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Zanzana, l'émission métal.